Hi everyone! Today, we're going to be going over leak code problem number 203, remove link list elements. So why are we doing this problem in particular? Well, the key takeaway for this problem is to get practice with using the dummy head approach. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, this is leak code problem number 203 remove link list elements. Given the head of a link list and an integer val, remove all the nodes of the link list that has node.val equals to val and return the new head. So it looks like the new head is emphasized to indicate that the head of the original link list could be removed as well. Okay, let's take a look at the example test cases they provide. Example 1 has an input of 1, 2, 6, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and the value we remove is 6. So the 6 in the middle of the list and the 6 at the end of the list are removed to get an output of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Example 2 just has an empty list, and the value we remove is 1 and the output is just an empty list. So it seems like this test case indicates that the input doesn't necessarily have to contain the value, and also that the input link list can be empty. All right, in example three, we have a link list with seven, 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 and seven. So four sevens in a row. And the value we remove is seven. So we actually remove all the elements in this linked list and end up with an empty output list. Okay, so now that we've read the prompt and looked at the provided test cases, let's ask ourselves if we have any clarifying questions at this point. I think that the test cases they provide are pretty good. So we have one test case that's a bit longer and we remove a middle node and a tail and the second test case proves that the value we want to remove doesn't necessarily have to be in the input list. And the last test case proves we can end up removing all the nodes in our linked list. All right, so since we don't have any questions, let's go ahead and start coming up with a plan. So we have to remove the first element whose data matches the given value, then the second element whose data matches the given value, and the third element, etc., until we reach the end of the linked list. So since we're performing an operation repeatedly, we can either do this recursively or iteratively. I'm going to choose to do this iteratively since it just feels more intuitive for me in this problem, but a recursive approach would also work just fine. All right, but since I'm taking an iterative approach, with a linked list problem, it means I'm probably going to need a dummy head, since otherwise we'd have to treat the head as an edge case, and the dummy head removes that special conditional logic for removing the head node. And having a dummy head approach means the first step of our plan is to create a dummy head. At the end, we will return the dummy head's next node as our solution. Okay, so now that we have our first step down, and we know we're taking an iterative approach, let's use an example test case to come up with the rest of our plan. I made this test case with an input of one, two, one, and three. The value we want to remove is one, and after removing the nodes with a value of one, we end up with an output linked list of two, then three. So there's a couple reasons why I picked this example test case. So I picked this example test case to brainstorm with because number one, it's not too big, so it's not gonna take super long to go through. And number two, it removed the head node, which is often an edge case in linked list problems. All right, since we're removing nodes, we're going to need a previous variable, which we can abbreviate as prev, and a current variable which we can call cur for short. We need a previous variable to keep track of a previous node because in order to delete a node, we need to manipulate the previous node's next pointer. 
So we initialize the previous variable to the dummy head and the current variable to the current head of our linked list. The next step is to check if the current node's value is the value we want to remove. If it is, then we delete the node by changing the previous node's next pointer to skip over the current node. Then we update our current variable to our previous node's next element. Then we check the next node. If the current value is not the value we want to remove, we update our previous and current variables accordingly. So we change prev to cur and cur to cur.next. Then we repeat this process. So we keep on checking nodes, removing the ones we want to remove, and updating our previous and current variables until we reach the end of our linked list. We will know when we've reached the end of our linked list when the current variable is none. And we're done. We successfully removed all nodes with the value of one from our linked list. And our input now matches our expected output. All right, so here's the plan that we came up with. And now that we've come up with a solid plan, let's start coding up our solution. OK, so I've copy pasted our plan over to our text editor. So the first step in our plan is to create a dummy head. So let's go ahead and do that. And our return value is the dummy head's next node. So let's go ahead and return that. OK, and the next step is to create prev and curve variables and set them to the dummy head and the head, respectively. And then we have to start checking nodes to see if we need to remove them. If cur.val is equal to val, then we set prev.next to cur.next. And then we update cur to prev.next. And if the current value does not match the one we want to remove, then we update prev to cur and cur to cur.next. So if we don't remove a node, we're just going to update our variables and move them forward by one node each. And the last step is to repeat this process and stop when cur is none. So let's put our if conditions in a while loop that terminates when cur is none. All right, so this code is looking pretty good, but let's run it through one of our test cases just to make sure it's really solid. All right, so the first example is kind of like the one we used to brainstorm. So we should be pretty confident that it's going to work. So let's run our code through this edge case with an empty linked list to see if that works. Okay, so prev starts off as being our dummy head and cur starts off being the head of our linked list, which is none. And we continue iterating until cur is none. So we've actually already reached our termination condition. So we don't enter the while loop and we just return dummy.next, which is none. Let's try going over example three, since that's also a bit of an edge case, since we're removing all the nodes in our linked list. So prev starts off as being our dummy node and cur starts off as seven. So seven matches the value we want to remove. So we change prev's next pointer to cur.next and update cur to prev.next. So now prev is still our dummy head, but we've skipped over the first seven and there's only three more sevens left in our linked list. And the next seven matches the value we want to remove. So we change prev's next pointer again to skip over this node with a seven. And we update our current variable to prev.next again. And the next seven matches the value we want to remove again. 
So we change prev's pointer and update cur, and then there's only one seven left. And of course, that's also the value we want to remove. So we change prev's pointer to point to cur.next, which is none, since we've hit the end of our linked list. And we update cur to prev.next, which we just updated to none. So now we've reached our termination condition, and we break out of our while loop and return dummy.next, which is none. All right, so it looks like that test case would work as well. Let's go ahead and run our code on all the test cases. And it passes. OK, so now that we have working code, let's evaluate the efficiency of our solution. So the time complexity is linear, since we have to check every node to see if it matches the value we want to remove. And the space complexity is constant, since we only store two variables, prev and cur. Earlier, we said we could have also taken a recursive approach. A recursive approach wouldn't have necessarily done better in terms of time complexity, since we still have to check each node to see if we want to remove it. But in terms of space complexity, it's a bit worse. A recursive approach would take linear space since we'd have n layers in our recursive call stack, one for each node in our linked list. All right, and that's it for today's video. Remember, the key takeaway for this problem, remove linked list elements, is getting practice with using the dummy head approach, which we usually use whenever we take an iterative approach to solving linked list problems. Hopefully, this video was helpful for you, and thanks for listening.